Okay, welcome to the Bookmap Platform Details webinar. This is Bruce at Bookmap. Uh, risk disclaimer, trading, futures, equities, and digital currencies involve substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. For more information, go to bookmap.com. Uh, there is an educational course that comes along with uh, subscribing to Bookmap. Okay, so uh, I'll go over that in just a minute. Now, not only do you get the educational course along with Bookmap, so part one through four educational course uh, that uh, covers uh, order flow, uh, basic mechanics uh, on up through um, uh, strategies and uh, structure and phenomena uh, into the uh, more advanced understanding of order flow, okay? Uh, and then along with that, you also get access to the daily advanced order flow webinars uh, where we don't go over the platform details. Uh, we go over the order flow. Okay. Uh, what's really going on in the order flow, uh, looking directly at book map and anticipating future price movement. Okay. So let's, uh, let's take a quick look at that website. Uh, if you just uh, come here to the home page and then scroll down, there's an intro video. It's a couple of minutes long. More information here about Bookmap. Uh, and um, a bit further down, uh, we also connect to NASDAQ Total View. Uh, a bit further down, uh, connectivity. Okay, so uh, this is how you connect Bookmap. Now, what Bookmap is, um, it's a visualization uh, software trading platform. Okay, so we're not a data provider. Uh, you will need date your own uh, data source uh, uh, for Bookmap. Uh, for the for now, actually, the with the digital currencies, it's it's free. Uh, that's the the one uh, uh, a distinction here uh, with the GDAX exchange. Uh, if you uh, you can get uh, Bookmap with uh, free um, uh, data for the uh, for for all digital currencies. Well, for for GDAX. Okay, um, and all the rest though for futures or U.S. equities, you will need to provide the data. Okay, now you can see we provide uh, or we connect to uh, NinjaTrader, TTX Trader Pro, and Interactive Brokers Traders Workstation, um, and uh, these are platforms. Okay, just like we are. Okay, uh, but we connect via the API of these specific platforms. However, um, we connect directly as these platforms do. Uh, as well to uh, CQG, Rhythmic, Gain, uh, IQ Feed, Transact, and then the Dev Expert for uh, that U.S. equities for the, for that Nasdaq total view. All right. So uh, that's uh, that's Bookmap uh, connectivity, and uh, here we go with the uh, uh, pricing, uh, understanding uh, what what it is and what you're getting here. Um, monthly or yearly, if you click on this, you'll see you get a 20% discount. Uh, there's uh, two versions that you can see, digital and global. Uh, there's the, the digital free, no credit card details are required. Uh, it's You only get access to one digital currency at a time. Okay, so you can look at Bitcoin if you want, uh, and uh, or Ethereum if you want. Uh, that's all you get. Uh, it is um, uh, completely free and it is live. Uh, but you get limited support. You do not get access to the advanced education. Uh, you, um, uh, you cannot trade from the chart. Uh, so there are, there are a lot of limitations, but it, you, you do get the heat map. You do get the volume uh, and basically the core of what book map is. So you can check it out for free. Uh, the digital plus here. Okay. This is uh, for uh, all of the digital currencies, $37 per month. Uh, and uh, what you get is uh, uh, up to 20 uh, digital currencies that you can access at a time. And uh, you can record and replay uh, the data. Okay, You get the advanced education as well uh, and the uh, advanced order flow webinars. Uh, you, get lim or you get full support, not limited support. Uh, and you can also uh, trade from the, uh, from the chart here with the one-click trading. Okay. Now the global uh, is everything in digital, uh, plus you you get support for futures and U.S. equities. Okay, and I just went over the, all the ways of connecting Bookmap, so you have all of that information. Uh, and then global plus, 
uh, it's the same as global, it, uh, but it also includes uh, the ability to trade right from the chart uh, in Bookmap, the one-click trading, uh, and then our host of proprietary add-on indicators uh, that cover very specific uh, order flow phenomena, okay? So uh, not your typical uh, type of indicators. For example, uh, with with Bookmap, we're able to understand not only, you know, precision in the order flow, we're also able to understand the players. So, for example, the large lot tracker, uh, we're able to see uh, larger players providing high liquidity in the limit order book. Uh, that's a, a, an advantage. Uh, you also get uh, imbalance indicators here. Uh, and another one here, which is larger players, uh, iceberg uh, uh, tracker, which um, uh, will identify uh, larger players that are using hidden orders. Okay. Uh, and then a correlation tracker as well. And of course, you get the advanced education. All right, uh, social media, you can follow us here on Twitter. Uh, all sorts of new information uh, every day uh, here on Twitter. Uh, you can see it's our Twitter handle here, uh, at bookmap underscore pro. Uh, and um, uh, you can subscribe to our YouTube page. Okay, so just a, a little info here on the YouTube page. Uh, there's some intro videos here. There's a playlist. You can click on the headline here. Uh, and um, uh, the header will uh, take you to a playlist of all the uh, intro videos. Uh, you can also do the same here for the features and components. Uh, here's the new Bookmap 7.0 overview, so you might want to take a look at that. Uh, and then order flow video snippets. Now, uh, these very quickly and concisely go through order flow phenomena that we cover in detail in the advanced um, order flow webinars. So if you just wanted to... Uh, uh, understand some of the phenomena uh, and get a quick look at it, uh, the concept of it, you can uh, watch some of these videos. All right. Okay. So let's take a look here. We're going to, well, let's look at the NASDAQ and what's going on. All right. So we can see we just broke out of a, of a pretty key area here at 6850 uh, and um, uh, right through or into this area of really high liquidity that was uh uh, had, a, had a ceiling on price here, as you can see, all right? So, uh, and uh, and we're continuing on up, and let's see if we can get up into the 62, 63 area up here, because that's where I see uh, the high liquidity here on the offer. So what am I looking at here? Uh, why do I think it's going to go up to this area here? Well, that's because that's where the liquidity is. Okay, now how do I know that? Well, Bookmap is recording all of this data, so we just tested into 63, as you can see. Uh, and um, let's take a quick look at it, okay? So th that high liquidity, did it trade? And, and the answer is right here in front of us, yes, it did, okay? These were sellers providing high liquidity up at this area at 63, and they traded. You can see the dots here trading right into that high liquidity. Okay, this is a concept I'll go over in just a minute, um, uh, but uh, I want to um, uh, first uh, uh, display or uh, cover what it is you're really looking at in Bookmap here, because uh, we've got a lot of new traders in here. So we're going to go through that. Uh, for some of you, uh, this is going to be a, a repeat, but um, I'll try to go through it uh, rather quickly here. Okay, so there's if you're not accustomed to looking at Bookmap and the heat map and the dots, uh, you probably uh, uh, you know it might look overwhelming or very foreign. Okay, it's actually very straightforward and objective data that is being displayed. And there's only three elements here. Historical best bid and offer, uh, the volume dots that trade on that historical best bid and offer, uh, and the um, uh, heat map, which is the uh, 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 recording of that limit order book. Okay, and I'll explain that in just a minute. But, uh, to to um, uh, cover this, let's uh, strip away a lot of the data here. Uh, and uh, instead, let's just show a candlestick chart. And let's zoom out a bit. Okay. It's a five-minute candlestick chart. And we know, we all know what that is. It's open a high, low, and close of that five-minute period. Okay, and that's it. Uh, and um, the simplicity is the beauty of it. Uh, but uh, the, the problem here is that... Uh, there's all sorts of, of data that, that uh, we just don't have access to. 
Okay, and we want that access. Uh, we want that insight. And uh, why this chart is not showing it uh, is because it's just uh, it, it, it's too simplistic. It's uh, uh, it's aggregating a five-minute period. So what happened in between those five minutes? What happened with inside that candle? Okay, we want to know that information, not only because there are microstructures within it, but we want to understand where the transactions took place uh, within microstructures within that five-minute period. So let's turn on the microstructure here by simply displaying the historical best bid and offer. Okay, uh, and uh, and here we go. So uh, now we now we can get a better understanding of uh, of what's going on. Okay, so for example. Uh, we have no clue here. Uh, when we uh, we break down below this area right here, okay, at 62 or, or I'm sorry, yeah, 62 or so, uh, you can see that we um, we kind of went sideways for a bit. Okay, none of that data was captured in this candlestick, just a big red candle. Um, and uh, but this is important. This is important data. Okay, we breached that data and we came, or that uh, that low here, this little swing, we came back up and tested again into this area, okay? And the break, so, you know, you'd be thinking, well, maybe, you know, it's starting to get green. I don't know, maybe you're interested in buying. Um, uh, but uh, it, it would be really a, a, a false false signal. And, and the reason being is we want to understand the structure, okay? Look at the microstructure here. This little high right here, uh, we came up and tested into it, but we didn't even come up high enough to test uh, uh, the high, okay? Uh, and we felt when we fell off immediately, okay? We're going to see when I turn on the volume exactly what occurred here, but this is key to understand this continuation to the downside, why it did this, okay? So let's turn on those volume dots, okay? And then uh, let's bring down the size a little bit. Okay, all right, so uh, uh, now we can see, um, let's zoom in a little bit here. Okay. Okay, so what's occurring uh, within this historical best bid and offer and the, uh, uh, the volume? Uh, actually, volume is, uh, well, I mean, we do see the clusters to the downside, okay? See, look at over here, all of this, all these red dots. Okay. This is aggressive selling, uh, market sells. They're hitting the bid. Okay. They're taking liquidity off of the best bid. Uh, they're doing so uh, again here and here. And we can see these clusters. Okay. Uh, and um, actually, it's kind of interesting. There are some clusters here on the, uh, on the buy side, which is uh, not too typical. It's, uh, uh, you know, buyers are starting to step in here, but uh, they're, they're really, uh, they're going to be getting stopped out down in these lower lower areas here uh, so um, so let's take a look here um, the um, you can see the the uh, the buyers do step in in some of these little areas here okay uh, but let's bring up the dot size just a bit we want to get the insight here of, of what's uh, what's really occurring yeah I mean there's some not it's not bad you know some of that buying here but we come up into it's the structure that really matters here and we need to get up above uh, this little swing up here okay uh, this um, uh, you know 53 and a quarter area somewhere around there okay as high as we got up here was was 50 Okay, it's an important figure as well, 68.50. That's probably why we're seeing quite a bit of buying uh, up underneath here. Um, but um, the um, uh, what uh, what ended up occurring here? Why did this break down? Well, if we zoom in a little bit a little bit further here, okay, uh, what uh, what we start to note here is look at these little points up in this area here. Okay, starting to exhaust out. We just don't see a lot of aggressive buying. Okay, uh, we do break it, uh, and you and you do see some uh, some buying up here, a little cluster of buying up here, uh, which is good. Uh, you know that bodes pretty well. However, it rejected. Okay, it did not auction out above uh, that area, and it did not retest that high that was up at 53. Okay, so the sellers come in and they rotate the price lower, uh, start hitting the bid back into the range here. 
okay? And in fact, uh, they take control uh, uh, right around this area here, okay? As we can see how this auctioned off, okay? We can see the volume dots, okay? And the sellers are in control here, okay? So now let's cover what we're, what we're looking at here. Um, the, um, uh, this is a, a sweep of the book, okay? We see that the sellers are in, in control uh, they continue to hit the bid and take uh, liquidity off of the best uh, the best bid okay, as driving price lower. There's some buying that starts to creep in in, in some of these areas here, uh, but uh, the, the sellers are in control at this point. All right, so that's usually how we break down from specific price levels. Uh, we can see a beautiful little pullback to where we broke from right here at 47, okay? And uh, look at the buying up here. There is none. Okay, this is very typical. Uh, it starts to exhaust out. Uh, we start to rotate lower again, and we find more uh, transactions and trade activity. Uh, and then we see sellers take control again here. Okay, and uh, the, the trend continues to the downside. All right. So we're, uh, these are the two elements that we have on this chart at this moment. Okay, we just have that historical best bid and offer and the volume. And if we zoom into these areas here, I can show you very specifically what's what's occurring. Okay? So you can see uh, that um, uh, the uh, uh, there were a, a three, uh, a volume of three uh, for these two transactions. Okay? So this is for volume of one and this is for two. Okay? You can see the dot size is a bit bigger so uh, that's what we're showing here. And these are the two elements, okay? You're looking at the historical best uh, bid and then the best offer here with red, okay? This is an aggressive market sell that transacted on the best bid. All right, now let's add that third element to the chart. And let's go to the current market for that. Uh, and we can see buyers looking uh, looking pretty good here. Uh, as they continue to uh, lift the offer, uh, might be might might start to see some selling. Yeah. Okay. Well. Anyway, let's we'll go over in a minute. Let's turn on that heat map uh, and um, uh, take a look at this. Okay. So this is that third element. What are we just dis displaying here? Okay. We are displaying uh, the rec the recording here of the limit order book. Okay. So in the dome, this is your dome here. This current order book column. Okay. And these numbers here, uh, this is these are the amount of contracts at these price levels, okay, on the offer and then on the bid. This is what is currently happening in the auction, okay. This is your current market. Uh, and we want to understand those high levels of liquidity. It's usually where the bigger players are, and uh, we want to understand transactions around those areas. They're important, okay. Look at this guy who just came in here, okay. 120 contracts, all right? So we can look at the current book, and that's really good, okay? We see that he just came in, okay? Now we see he pulled, but uh, uh, this is the kind of detail that you don't see, all right? Uh, is, um, uh, it's so hard to, to read the dome and to understand these numbers so quickly, uh, it's, and it's very tedious uh, and very taxing uh, on, your, uh, uh, on your brain. So, uh, what we do in bookmap is we take these numbers and here in this window, which is the, the same window as uh, uh, this current order book column here, um, it, but it's just showing it graphically. That's all. So here's your best bid and offer. Your last traded volume is the number here. Okay. And then we take these areas of high liquidity, like 59 up here, uh, and um, uh, we paint it into the heat map. Okay. And uh, we see, um, well, the guy just pulled. Uh, he's down here now uh, at 56 uh, with uh, 53 contracts, okay? Now he just pulled again. See how taxing that would be uh, on your mind? Uh, obviously, this is, you know, it's got to be the same player, okay? Why is that? Well, here, we can we can look right at it here. Um, uh, this, this player here had high liquidity here, okay? Uh, someone who's uh, providing um, uh, 61 contracts, right? And he decides to pull at the same moment he pulls, he adds lower, okay? And then over here, at the same moment he pulls at 56, he adds higher, okay? So now, 
uh, not only are we recording all the liquidity, okay, but you can start to identify the specific trader. Uh, and that's going to really help you. Okay, Understand how they're behaving, uh, their intent to trade uh, in some of these areas. Okay, And then what we can do is we can start to get into uh, areas of uh, that high liquidity and how it is uh, behaving. Okay, and uh, how that's an advantage. Okay, let's take the candlestick chart off for a moment. And we'll bring the volume dot size down. Okay, so let's make a distinction between high liquidity uh, that uh, stays in the book uh, and has intent to trade uh, compared to low liquidity, or I'm sorry, high liquidity uh, that uh, uh, has no intent to trade, it only stays in the book for a little bit, uh, looking to uh, most likely skew the auction with some sort of uh, a spoofing type of activity uh, to uh, maybe achieve some other uh, a goal or, or means. All right, so uh, let's, uh, let's make that distinction. Let's take a look here as we zoom out, uh, and we'll look up at this area here. Okay. All right. Well, we trade right into that area that we saw here in the beginning of the uh, of the webinar. Okay. So let's uh, let's let's take a quick look. Okay. What occurred up here? We use the uh, hover over uh, tool here, or the data tip tool. Uh, on the ask here, you can see there were 128 contracts. Okay. Well, here's what occurred. Okay. The uh, buyers. Uh, lift the offer and right into that high liquidity. Okay, so you can see exactly what's trading here. Okay, in fact, over in our data column here uh, for volume, we have 128. So, did this is this real liquidity uh, and uh, did it have intent to trade? And the answer is yes. This is what that looks like here in Bookmap. Okay, so you're looking for. Uh, areas where larger players uh, are staying in the book uh, and uh, and trading. Okay, uh, this is where you, you're going to start to see areas of absorption, uh, and it's going to start to slow down uh, the uh, the movement to the upside. Okay, if larger players start to absorb more and more at higher levels. Okay, so let's zoom out a bit more, and you can see that yes, in, indeed, we did go higher here. Okay. But uh, we start to see the, um, uh, you know, it doesn't quite charge up into these areas like it did here in this example. Okay. We also see it here. Okay. And they also absorb some here as well. Okay. We know that. That's fact. Okay. So you can see I'm starting to use this limit order book uh, or this uh, uh, recording of the dome on much higher time frames. And I'm starting to understand these areas. Uh, and put it into perspective, uh, and that helps my trading, okay? So uh, I, I know that larger players are staying in the book. I know that they are absorbing, okay? Now, uh, it, you know, we're still in an uptrend, okay, until we're not. Uh, uh, in fact, we, uh, we retest back here to uh, basically where we broke from, uh, and we continue on up to the upside. But look at the breakout to the upside here compared to over here. Okay, we can see that uh, the breakout to the upside is uh, pretty minimal. In fact, we go up a little bit higher, okay, and it would be nice to see one more, you know, area of high liquidity absorb. Uh, but uh, they start to pull some of that, and we basically exhaust out on the buy side. Okay, so these little points here, uh, we're starting to see less trade at some of the higher highs, and then we test it three times here, or more, uh, many times here. And there's just no buying, okay? So uh, up here, 46 contracts traded. Uh, it's uh, uh, you know starting to exhaust out. We're not finding buyers. Some sellers will come in, and they're, they're going to rotate the uh, price back into uh, the middle of that range. And we're going to see uh, if they start to take control, okay? And that's exactly what they did. We start to break some of the swings here, uh, we, you know, the structure. Uh, and you start to see sellers, more and more sellers starting to come in, okay? And that's what this looks like, okay? And uh, now uh, let's start to understand uh, areas where uh, they're, they're uh, pulling that high liquidity, okay? And uh, did they pull here? 
And the uh, the answer is uh, uh, no. Uh, uh, you can see them; they, they stayed here, and some of it traded into it. So we have 26 contracts that traded. Okay. We rotate back up though, uh, and uh, we continue on down. So some of it was pulled, some of it traded, uh, and um, uh, we want to uh, we want to gauge though, uh, you know, where uh, they're um, uh, willing to uh, to trade or not. Okay, and uh, yeah, it's, I'm trying to find that example of where they start to pull here. Uh, this is kind of a combo uh, uh, as well. I mean, you can still see some of that liquidity. A lot of it pulls here, okay, 55, down to 48, down to 44, uh, down to 37, and some's trading into that area though, okay? So uh, some of it's trading, some of it's pulled. But, uh, I'll find a, a better example of them pulling liquidity. I mean, you know, we can see it all over the chart. I mean, I just want to find a, a, a better example when price really comes down to it, they pull. And you can see them pulling here, but they're, they've been adding and pulling here for a while. Okay, so um, where's a better example? Okay, well here, okay. So did uh, did these guys trade, okay? Both of the both of these players here, 51 contracts followed by 58 contracts up above. Okay, here's what pulled liquidity looks like. Okay, they, they pull the this the area here in the heat map uh, starts to go darker. Okay, as we trade up into that area, uh, so uh, they don't want to be buy or they don't want to be sellers up here. Okay, that's what that looks like. So what what occurs? Uh, we uh, uh, we basically exhaust out on that buy side, uh, and we start to uh, uh, rotate uh, uh, to the downside again. We get one more kind of hit to the high here, uh, and then uh, and then sellers come in. Okay, so uh, the point I'm trying to cover here uh, is you're able to use this uh, dome on much higher time frames. Okay, you're able to understand the intent of these traders. Uh, due to the uh, recording here of the uh, uh, of the limit order book, okay? and this is giving you a lot of insight here. Okay, now some some traded still, so we're seeing a little bit of both. But uh, you know, a lot of this a lot of this was pulled when it's coming down into it, so they don't they don't have intent to trade. Okay. Anyway. Uh, let's see, the uh, webinar ends up here uh, just now, and uh, what we do though on uh, uh, on Fridays is uh, we give you the uh, re the um, access to the advanced order flow webinar, okay? So uh, let me do that for you, so you can get a feel for what we do in the advanced order flow webinar. A little sneak peek into it uh, when you subscribe, all right? so. Uh, here is that link. So go ahead and click on that and um, and come in uh, right now uh, to the next uh, next webinar. We'll see you there.